Welcome to the Storycraft Society. Today we're going to be talking about the top five ways that we can improve running our goblins in combat. Welcome back to the channel everyone, my name is Garmin and today we're talking about how to make your goblins feel more cinematic in combat. A lot of people think goblins are a boring low level monster that you only fight when your character isn't ready to fight the cool stuff yet. Well with these five tips, I think your goblins will be feeling a lot cooler at the table. Let's get after it. Tip number one, goblins thrive in large numbers. So if we look at Volo's Guide to Monsters, it'll tell us goblins occupy an uneasy place in a dangerous world. Goblins know that their lifespan is short and that individually they're weak. So a goblin that's separated from their tribe is easily likely to spill information to our players, while that exact same goblin, while surrounded by their goblin allies, would just laugh in their face. The larger the group, the safer the goblin feels. So what does this mean in combat? First, First, it means that goblins are more willing to try risky things and make risky attacks when they outnumber their foes. Simply put, if there are more goblins on the table than you have PCs, the goblins are going to act ballsier in combat. Second, it is unlikely for a solo goblin or outnumbered group of goblins to pick a fight with a group of capable looking foes without a really good reason. Third and finally, once goblins start losing a fight, they are infinitely more likely to run away from that fight. So consider having your outnumbered or losing goblins make constitution saves at the start of each of their turns and each round uh, as less and less goblins are on the field the DC gets increasingly more and more difficult for them to pass. Any goblin obviously who fails this save is ready to run and they are booking it off the field running away and this creates a downward spiral so that as one goblin runs it makes it more and more likely for the brave goblins even to lose their edge and decide to run also. Tip number two, goblins want to be mobile and roguelike when they fight. We can learn a lot about a monster by looking at their stat block in the monster manual and goblins are no different. First of all, goblins have a basic melee attack using their scimitar and they have a basic ranged attack using their short bow. But all of the juice that we're looking for is gonna come from actually their nimble escape ability. The ability says that the goblin can take the disengage or hide action as a bonus action on each of its turns. This implies that the average goblin is so good at running away or hiding from a threat that it doesn't even take their main action to do this. And think about it, the only player class that can do this is the rogue, and they don't get that ability until second level. This means that the average goblin is as good at running away from and hiding from a threat as a second level rogue. Goblins even have a stealth bonus of plus six. That means that they've spent a lot of their life perfecting this ability. So what does this mean in combat? Well, goblins are very unlikely to stand still while they fight. They are gonna constantly be running around the battlefield, disengaging from more scary opponents and finding their way to more vulnerable looking opponents. Consider all of the different possibilities you have for visual descriptions of how all the goblins on your battlefield disengage. Do they nimbly dodge out of the way of their attacker's strikes? Do they maybe reach into their pocket and pull out a handful of sand that they throw into their adversary's face before they cackle and skitter across the battlefield? All of these details will make each goblin in a group of goblins feel individual and unique without having to change their stat block. And lastly, if a goblin has the opportunity to hide, they will. Not only does being hidden from an enemy give them advantage on their next attack, a goblin who hides through most of the fight is a goblin that is likely to live through most of that fight. Tip number three, goblins delight in lording their powers over others. In the monster manual, goblins are said to have malicious glee. It says, motivated by greed and malice, goblins can't help but celebrate the few times they have the upper hand. They dance, caper with sheer joy when victory is theirs. In Volo's Guide to Monsters, it says that goblins dominate other creatures whenever they can, for goblins' life is short. Because goblins are individually weak and cruel, they love to lord any power they can over others, even if that power is only perceived. And this comes out in a variety of ways. Goblins love to torment other creatures and they embrace all manner of wickedness. Goblins will dance over the body of a fallen foe. They will laugh in the face of a hero caught in one of their traps. They will chant demeaning phrases at a PC who seems to be losing a fight. They will abuse 
any authority they manage to claim. This could be over a captured PC or NPC. This could also be by bullying a weaker goblin in their tribe. So what does this mean in combat? Well, certainly it means that a goblin would waste time, maybe even waste their whole turn rubbing a perceived victory in the face of a hero. This could happen if a goblin rolls a crit. They could waste their entire next turn laughing at the pain that they inflicted or mocking that PC to their goblin allies. Another way that you could utilize this is the goblin could dance on the fallen body of an enemy, waste their whole action on their turn before they run along to their next enemy that they're fighting. If a hero is caught in one of their traps, this could be enough to distract a whole mob of goblins. When they should be focused on the hero's party slowly sneaking up to attack, all of the goblins could easily be too distracted by mocking or taunting the PC to even notice their allies. Tip number four, goblins are lazy and undisciplined. When we look at the monster manual, it tells us that goblins are lazy and undisciplined, making them poor servants, laborers, and guards. Since goblins are aware of their short lifespan, we can assume that this leads to their laziness and lack of discipline. Goblins will do whatever they can to avoid hard work, and this could come in the form of pushing that work off onto a lesser goblin in their tribe, or just ditching the work altogether. And so now, what does this mean for us in combat? A goblin is never going to choose the right path if it is harder than the easier path. What this means is a goblin is never gonna go back after a fallen ally, and they may even push one of their allies further into the fight if it meant saving themselves. A goblin's loyalty is easily swayed by the easiest possible choice. Will a goblin help a group of PCs? It's likely to if that's the easiest option. Loyalty for goblins is only common when it is the path of least resistance. Asking yourself what the easiest course of action is for a goblin is definitely the best way to find out what their action will be in combat. A goblin that is separated from their allies is very likely to run. A goblin that is surrounded by the heroes is definitely likely to surrender, and a goblin that is being threatened by the heroes is definitely likely to give up information. Tip number five, goblins will do anything in their power to tip the scales in their favor. Another telling thing that we can learn about goblins from their stat block is their alignment, which is neutral evil. The player's handbook describes neutral evil as the alignment of those who do whatever they can get away with without compassion or qualms. This suggests that goblins will use any technique that they can to gain advantage in a situation. They absolutely will use traps and snares in an effort to disable unwary foes. They prefer ambushes to frontal assaults, and they will gladly stab you in the back or pounce on you while you sleep in an effort to not have to fight fair. So what does this mean for us in combat? Well, a goblin will use deception. They'll use nearby terrain and traps to win a fight. This could come from like a PC would have their foot trapped in a snare. The goblin will run out and pounce on them. A goblin may threaten to stab an unconscious hero on the ground just to distract their allies. A goblin might make a deception check to play dead if they're hurt, but not killed outright. Then when an unaware PC gets close, they'll reach out and stab them in the foot. Uh, these are all techniques that goblins will use to kind of tip the scales in their favor. If a goblin is lucky enough to see a character's fears or weaknesses, a goblin will certainly exploit it. Let's say one of your PCs are walking through a cavern, uh, their face uh, runs into a bunch of spider webs, and they freak out because the, the character is scared of spiders. Well, a goblin may spend the next hour or so finding and, and, and getting spiders and storing in a box. Then when they have to fight that particular character, they might throw the box of spiders against that hero to try and tip the scales in their favor. One trick that you can always use if you really want to show how evil a particular group of goblins are and you have a Beastmaster Ranger, the goblins would certainly see that that Beastmaster cares for their animal companion and you could have the goblins try to trap the beast to use as a bargaining chip later in case things go south for them. Trust me, if you want to show how evil goblins are, there is no way faster to make your players hate a group of anybody if they attack animals. And there you have my top five tips on how to make your goblins feel more cinematic in combat. If I missed any, if there are some that you have that I didn't think of, I would love to hear them. Please let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, definitely drop me a like. And if you wanna see more of this content, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to see when we release our videos every Thursday. But until the next video, everyone, I'll be seeing you.
Hey everyone, actually one more thing before we go. I just wanted to remind everyone that both parts of my Dirk Ticks Do's adventure are available right now on DriveThruRPG. I'll put a link to both of them in the description below. It's set up currently as pay what you want. So if you want to throw a few dollars at the channel, you are more than welcome to do that. I would appreciate it greatly. But if not, I just want you to download it, read it, tell me what you think. Uh, leave it in the comment section below. If you like it, what you like, dislike, all of that stuff, I would love to hear all of it. So with that being said, until next week, I'll be seeing you. For real this time.